Oscar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here and for, to my colleagues for this, I think, very uh, educational and important discussion. I want to say, uh, just as a point of reference, that this is, discussion has been going on for quite a long time, and I'm glad that this is really raising itself now to a point where we may have a bipartisan solution that makes some steps in the right direction. I just want to note that uh, our chairman of the subcommittee was very engaged in this, and I, when I was his law school student um, at American University Law School, I wrote a thesis where he was the advisor on the disenfranchisement and voting rights for con convicted felons. I saw that in a box. Uh, a couple of months ago and thought. I, I hope you won't mind my violating your academic privacy, but you got an A on your thesis. I did. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but the other thing I wanted to share was an experience that I had. Um, I was a pro I have been a prosecutor in the past, and um, I had the pleasure and the honor of working in the Bronx District Attorney's Office. And just as a personal experience, I recall one day taking my sons to a barber shop. People had told me that this has got to be one of the hottest, greatest barber shops um, in the South Bronx. And sitting there with three of my little, my sons were really small at the time, waiting for them to see the barber, and it was a young shop. These were young guys. They even had an area of play for their um, children. Uh, and as I looked at the guy who was about to do my son's hair, I realized I'd put him in jail, uh, that I was the prosecutor. And so I began to put my, the newspaper a little closer over my face as he was uh, about to start sh shaving my son's head. And um, afterwards, when I paid him, and thanked him, you know, said he did a great job. He called me by name and said, you know, and I want to thank you because uh, you were definitely the ADA on that case, um, but I definitely did the crime, and being in jail is where I got my barber's license from. Um, but he couldn't find work, and so he and two other guys from the barber shop uh, went in and started their own barber shop together. And the city of New York gave them support to be able and lease a place to do that. And that became a safe place for not only young people, they were able to have their children there um, and care for their children while they were working. So these are important things that, uh, in communities to have, and that's just a personal experience. But banning the box is a crucial um, because research shows that it, removing barriers to employment is essential to providing a real second chance for individuals. Uh, two studies from the National Institute of Justice found that having a criminal record reduces the likelihood of a job callback or offer by nearly 50 percent. Um, you both are, I'm sure, very aware of that. Uh, what would these penalties even apply to those who would have been arrested or who actually have not been convicted? Can any of you answer that? Um, does this apply to arrest, this banning the box? Or is it just for convictions? Um, well, so uh, if, if you are, this particular bill mm -hmm. um, allows the government employer um, to inquire into um, your criminal history, but then again, again, that would mean that you'd have to have, have been convicted Having of a crime. That, that said, mm -hmm. as you well know, if you do a criminal background check, you can often see where someone has been arrested. arrested. So, you know, um, it would still be available to you if you're, uh, you know, depending on the search mechanism that you're using. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, in the panel before, uh, Senator Booker cited some information from the American Bar Association, which stated that there was 45 thousand collateral um, consequences to having a criminal conviction. I think that's really important for us to know that this is just one of many consequences to individuals of having that. Uh, you cited earlier, Ms. Harris, the Virgin Islands, which adopted a robust ban the box that uh, keeps from public and private, which means that employers are hiring and looking for good workers because there are a staggering 30 percent of 18 to 35-year-olds in the Virgin Islands that have a criminal record. Most for um, nonviolent offenses, most are petty offenses and marijuana offenses in, in our case. And one of the other things that our legislature did last year that I was really happy to be a part of was to remove the waiver for individuals to receive food stamps. Because we saw that we had so many families, the individuals that were coming out of jail, 
that unless a state allows it, will not allow them to receive food stamps for them and their families as they're trying to find work and trying to make that in transition. So we should be working um, here at the federal level to look at states with the states to see what support do they need from us in federal legislation that will allow them to um, support individuals. Um, there are a lot of other things that I'd like to ask you all, but I want to thank you so much for having this hearing. This has been a really wonderful conversation, and I'm glad to get this information on the record so our colleagues can see uh, the importance of banning the box. Thank you. The gentlelady yields. We come to the gentleman.